Hi friends, I am Karthik Ravindra Kade and this is Kate Tutorials. And in this class, I am going to discuss about liquid sulfur dioxide, its advantages and disadvantages of liquid sulfur dioxide. The first point in advantages is even it is a gas at normal temperature and pressure, it can be easily liquidified. This is the merit or the advantages of liquid sulfur dioxide. It can be easily liquidified. And the next point is it can be easily handled and its cost is less. So it is low cost. And the third point is the dielectric constant of liquid sulfur dioxide is 17.4 which I have discussed in one of my video in the same series of non aqueous solvents. So if you want to know about liquid that is dielectric constant please go to that video. I have given the link of all the videos in my description. So please go to go to through all those videos and learn about dielectric constant of liquid sulfur dioxide and about ammonia and water. So the advantages the third advantages of liquid ammonia uh, liquid sulfur dioxide is the dielectric constant makes this as a good solvent for covalent compounds such as chlorine bromine cl2 br2 fluorine f2 and bcl3 etc for such covalent compounds that is organic compounds it becomes a good solvent because of its dielectric constant which is 17.4 and the fourth advantages of this liquid sulfur dioxide is inorganic salts such as sodium chloride or potassium chloride kcl etc precipitate in liquid sulfur dioxide this i have discussed in chemical reactions of sulfur dioxide but i want to discuss it here also we know that if i put this sodium chloride that is table salt what we call eating salt if we put this sodium chloride in water it is going to dissolve that is it is going to soluble the same way the potassium chloride also if we put in water it is going to soluble if i take this sodium chloride and if i put it in liquid sulfur dioxide then what happens is it is insoluble it becomes a solid and it settles down that is it undergo precipitation that is nothing but methatetical reaction what we say in non aqueous solvents so what happens is see AlCl3 is there and I am going to consider 3 molecules of sodium iodide. If I put this in liquid sulfur dioxide medium and the reaction occurs and I am going to get 3 moles of sodium chloride plus AlI3. Here this NaCl is undergoing precipitation. It is going to be settled down. In the same way if I consider one more reaction. 2 molecules of KBr plus SOCl2 in liquid sulfur dioxide then I am going to get 2 molecules of KCl which is undergoing precipitation and I am going to get SOBr2 the same this NaCl and KCl will not be precipitated in aqueous medium that is in water but whereas in liquid sulfur dioxide or liquid ammonia we are going to get its precipitated these salts are going to be precipitated and the fifth point in this liquid sulfur dioxide is many organic reactions such as bromination, sulfonation, Friedel-Craft reactions are carried out in liquid sulfur dioxide. Let me give you the example. What it is we know phenol OH group will be attached to this benzene ring so it is phenol and we know that because of this OH group it activates this ring by giving these electrons through resonance we know because of that if any electrophile attacks it it attacks it is going to attack at ortho or para position because it is ortho or para directing group this OH group is ortho or para directing group and this is ring activator it activates the ring by giving its lone pair of electron. So what happens this? I am going to consider this phenol bromination Br single bond Br. It acts as electrophile. 
in liquid sulfur dioxide medium i take this uh, solvent to be this liquid sulfur dioxide as a medium if i carry out this bromination i am going to get the product as para bromophenol that is the product para because of this oh group it is ortho para directing this is bromination the same way we can study about sulfonation it also take place in liquid sulfur dioxide medium let me give you example for friedel craft reaction what it is we know it is benzene isn't it then what i am going to take is ch3cocl and in liquid sulfur dioxide in presence of uh, some acid uh, like alcl3 this acts as acid and they, these are going to take this uh, chlorine here because it is electron deficient it takes this chlorine so what we get is we get a electrophile and this electrophile going to attack this benzene and we are going to get co ch3 that is acetophenone that is ketone we are going to get r o r ketone this reaction this is called as friedel craft acylation because acyl group is going to attack this is takes place in presence of liquid sulfur dioxide so this is also a advantages of liquid sulfur dioxide let us now discuss about disadvantages of liquid sulfur dioxide the first disadvantage of liquid sulfur dioxide is see liquid sulfur dioxide is not a good electrical conductor like water and ammonia it is not a good electrical conductor and the next point is metals are insoluble in liquid ammonia we discussed metals are soluble in liquid ammonia we are going to get m nh3 x times plus and electron nh3 y times minus we got because metals like s block elements metals are going to react with liquid ammonia but the same metals are not going to react with this so2 that is these are insoluble whereas those are soluble in liquid ammonia but they are not going to undergo any chemical reaction with liquid ammonia that point should be remembered and the next third point that is third disadvantage of liquid sulfur dioxide is alkanes are insoluble in sulfur dioxide and the fourth disadvantage is only a limited number of salts undergo solvolysis in liquid sulfur dioxide we, we know solvolysis solvo means solvent lysis means breaking breaking of solvent is nothing but solvolysis and the example the pcl5 plus so so2 let me write like this so it is going to break like this and we are going to get pocl3 plus socl2 that is the good example solvolysis only limited number of salts undergo solvolysis not all the salts see the beauty here here the pcl5 is sp3 d hybridized and this so2 is the structure of so2 will be like this so it will be sp2 hybridized whereas in pocl3 here it is sp3 hybridized and the structure is like this and socl2 will be structure is like this and it is sp3 hybridized about this hybridization and their structures and P let me draw the structure of pcl5 it will be like this here p will be there and it trigonal planar and there will be two cl like this linked like this so it is trigonal planar that is trigonal bipyramidal here i am going to get one pyramid here one pyramid and here it is trigonal planar trigonal planar trigonal bipyramidal whereas sp2 means trigonal planar and this pcl3 is tetrahedral these two are in same plane this will be below the plane and this is above the plane or there is a pyramid like this 
see these are in same plane this is below pyramid is there and there is a line above like this so it is sp3 sp3 hybridized whereas it is also sp3 hybridized we am i am going to get the strange structure and about their structure bond angle i am going to make videos so if you want to learn the basics of chemistry please stay tuned with my channel thank you